To begin with, um, we shall be looking at a specific um, set of questions from the Gauteng province. And, but not only from the Gauteng province, I'll also have once again questions from other provinces as well. Okay. We shall start with the questions you brought. I know that they are pretty straightforward, but it will help to uh, navigate through the questions and make sure that we can answer the questions. You brought a question that focuses on question two. And um, right, in the diagram, PQ is a diameter, etc., and we need to prove this result. I have made enough space available on the other side of the um, of the screen. Right, so in the diagram, if PQ is a diameter of this circle, uh, we realize uh, P is, is actually over there and Q is over there. If this is a diameter, you're able to see that it obtains an angle of 90 degrees at, this, at the circumference of the, of the circle. In the diagram, you have the diameter PQ. Uh, PQR is a straight line, so you have PQR is straight. Right, and uh, QR equals QS. So you do have that obviously QR equals QS and they're both X. So you made them X there obviously already. And now we just have to prove that um, RS equals this result. So we're interested in finding the length of, of RS. But first things first, we, we can see that we also have that QPS, QP. S equals the angle theta at the circumference of the circle. So what is therefore the meaning of this here? Uh, it means therefore, if we write the solution, we first realize therefore that angle Q2 is equal to what? Is equal to 90 degrees plus theta. Why? Okay, that is one thing that you need to do. Um, to get the result that the, teacher, the lecturer wanted, the teacher wanted. So this is the case because the exterior angle of triangle equals uh, the sum, the sum of the interior opposite angles. Okay, if this is the case, what do we get next out of these? What do we get next out of these? Right, so we need uh, right now to actually work in a specific triangle. So we're going to work in triangle. Right, we're going to work in triangle QRS. Right, working in triangle QRS, we have the triangle here like this. And here it is. This is X and that is F, X, this is Q, R, S. Q2 90 degrees plus X. Okay, so if we want to find RS, we use the cosine rule. So we have RS um, squared will be the same as X squared plus x squared. So in other words, rs squared will be x squared plus x squared minus twice x and x cosine of the angle there. And this is actually q2, from which we're able to see that rs squared equals, okay, x squared plus x squared gives us what? Gives us exactly 2x squared minus x by x gives us exactly x squared, the cosine of the angle Q2, which is 90 degrees plus theta. Rs squared, which is 2x squared minus 2x squared, in which quadrant is 90 plus, is in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, um, the cosine itself is what is negative, but it changes to the co-function, and the cofunction of the cosine is the sine of theta, meaning Rs squared is the same as twice x squared. Negative by negative gives us plus twice x squared, the sine of the angle theta, from which we're able to obtain by factoring um, out x squared as a common factor there. 
right, we shall have within the brackets, or we can factor out two uh, x squared, and then we have one plus the trigonometric sine of x. The trigonometric sine of x, right, from which we're able to achieve a couple of things. Right, so we're able to get that this here is the same as the sine of theta. So we take the square root on the left and we have rs squared. We apply the square root on the right and we have 2x squared into 1 plus the trigonometric sine of theta. And the meaning is, uh, if we deal with this here, the square root of rs squared becomes only rs, and the square root of um, um, 2x squared here. Right, so that one you can write is the square root of x squared into 2. Right, so you can write the square root of x squared into 2, uh, from which we're able to get the following. Right, so it hits the square root of x squared into 2. Right, so it becomes the square root of x squared into 2 into 1 plus the sine. 1 plus the sine. This way, from which we have our s, the square root of x squared is only x, and then you are left with the square root of 2 into 1 plus the trigonometric sine of theta. All right, so that is the answer to the question. That is the answer to the question. So we continue. Yes, sir. All right, next question. So we got the result because we can prove that rs equals x into, into that. Right, the next question I received from you, I decided to spend some time on it just to discuss with you, but obviously we shall look at interprovincial questions that featured in this year's prelim examinations. Right, in the figure you have the information given, you have to prove that kl equals this, where kl is actually uh, that one. What I decided to break the question down into digestible pieces. And so I decided to put the shape there, but we have to prove this result. Um, in the figure, we have K, M, and L are three points in the same horizontal plane. This K, this M, and this L, the three points in the same horizontal plane. The angle, uh, K, L, M is 120 degrees. This angle here, K, um, L, M, obviously this is wrong. Okay, it must be K, M, L. Okay, examiners don't do this. Right, so the examiner made a mistake there. So clearly that must be the angle K, M, L, which is 120 degrees. So examiners don't do this because the examiner just to actually put KLM instead of putting KML. Right, so T represents the position of a point directly above K. Okay, there is T up there. So that TK is equal to is equal to LM. Right, there's TK equals um, LM, and this is Y, and that is Y. TKM, right, so there's TKM equals 90 degrees, but there's also TKL, TKL, which is also 90 degrees. All right, so I'm glad that you have shown uh, the two angles of 90 degrees there. Okay, so the angle of elevation of T from M, the angle of elevation of T from M is theta. There it is. This angle is theta. There it is. And therefore, we need to just prove this result here. Right, so to prove KL, uh, we shall be in a position to proceed uh, with ease there. Right, we shall be able to proceed. So first, to prove KL, 
what do we use? We use any of the results, right? Because here is the K and here is the L. This one is exactly Y, but we just need one side, okay? Because we're gonna use the cosine rule because we, you can see the hint is that there's already a square root. We're gonna use the cosine rule because we have the included angle, but we just need this side here. So we'll need to use this one here, right? So we're gonna work first in triangle TKM. Right, so in triangle, right, TKM. What do we have in that triangle? Right, so what do we have in that triangle? We have exactly that. But now this angle is theta, so yeah, you're right, this one is theta. So we're gonna be in a position to find that one, but we, we have the opposite and we're interested in the adjacent um, in the <coughs> of Sokatoa. In view of Sokotoa, we have the opposite. We're interested in the adjacent. Opposite adjacent is the tangent. So we shall have the tangent. We have the tangent of theta, which is the opposite, uh, which is actually y over the adjacent side. And the adjacent side is clearly km. It's clearly the side km. From which we're able to achieve um, km. Right, by cross multiplication, we, can, we cross multiply km sits here and the tan will sit at the bottom. Now the tangent here sits at the bottom of the uh, fraction, okay? In which case we obtain the expression for Km there. Right, next thing, um, now we're in a position to actually work in this, in, in this triangle over here, right? So this is therefore straightforward, in which case therefore we tell the examiner that Mr. Examiner we now gonna work in one triangle. So you're gonna work in triangle K, M, L. Okay, right, so what is this? We're interested in finding K, L. So we know therefore that K, L squared will be the same as what? Right, so K, L squared, you have Y and this one, this side here is Y divided by the tangent of theta. In which case, therefore, it becomes y squared, so the kl squared equals y squared plus actually y divided by the tan of theta, the tan of theta squared, right, minus two in view of the cosine rule, right, you multiply the y here and then you multiply by the, you multiply this and that, the y, the tan of theta, and then you have the cosine of the angle included, 120 degrees. 120 degrees, okay? So we have exactly that one. In which case, therefore, we have KL squared. What is KL squared? It's exactly Y squared plus Y squared divided by the tangent squared of theta minus two y squared divided by the tangent of theta. What is this now? The cosine of 120 is the same using reduction formula. It's 180 degrees minus 60 degrees because this is clearly 120 degrees. In which case, therefore, we have KL squared, which is the same as uh, y squared plus Right, we have y squared divided by the tangent squared of theta minus, so here this one is exactly 2y squared divided by the tangent of theta, in which quadrant is 180 minus is in the second quadrant, and the second quadrant the cosine is negative, and then you just write cosine and the acute angle of 60 degrees, in which case we have therefore uh, the KL squared, which is the same as Y squared plus uh, Y squared divided by the tangent, the tangent squared of theta. The negative by the negative becomes a plus. You have exactly two Y squared divided by the trigonometric tangent of theta. Right, so the cosine of 60 degrees is uh, one over two from the special triangles. And we have this result here, right? From this, we're able to see that KL squared is the same as 
uh, write y squared plus uh, y squared divided by the tangent squared of theta plus now you have y squared divided by uh, the tangent of, of theta. Okay. Right. So out of this, we continue uh, there. We divide the whiteboard so that we, we can proceed further to the uh, right hand side of the of, of the board. And we have this. Now we clearly see that there is y squared, y squared, y squared, which is therefore a common factor. Right, with that common factor, we have one over the tangent squared. So we have one over the tangent squared of theta. And then we have uh, the tangent of theta plus one. Right, from which now we're able to um, take the square root on the left and the square root on the right hand side. So we apply the square root sign on the left of the equation. Furthermore, we apply the square root on the right hand side of the equation. And we have the tangent squared of theta. We have one divided by the tangent of theta. Right, we add a one there. Right, so we are in business now. With this said, we are in a position to realize, uh, therefore, that the square root would therefore give us exactly KL. Right, the square root of the y squared becomes a y. And we therefore have the square root of everything else that is sort of irreducible. So we have one divided by the tangent squared of theta. And we have one divided by the tangent of theta plus one. Right. And it's exactly what the examiner wanted. And we have the result. Okay. So just to look at the solution and make sure that you understand the solution because um, we are practicing um, solutions of triangles. And we are focusing on the two and the third rule, the sine, the cosine, and the trigonometric area formula. The next question. The next question is actually from the Gauteng province or from the province of Gauteng. And we are interested in finding, so it came in the trials of 2023, but we are discussing this specific question. Right, in the diagram below, you have P, Q, and T. This P, Q, and T, there are three points, etc. And you, so you should show this, you should show that, and that. And I decided to break the question down in the digestible pieces uh, so that we can be in a position to solve it uh, piece by piece. Uh, right, so in the diagram below, um, P, Q, and T, we have P, Q, and T are three points in the same horizontal plane. Right, and MT is a vertical mass. Right, here is MT, it is vertical. Right, and therefore, because it is vertical, it makes angles of 90 degrees with the horizontal. And we have MP and MQ are two straight uh, straight wires. Here is MP and here is MQ. They're those straight straight wires. The angle of elevation of M from Q is theta. This one here is exactly theta. PQ is k meters. So we have PQ is actually k meters. PM is equal to 2PQ. You have the PM is equal to uh, twice uh, uh, the PQ. Right, so this is extremely important for us. Right, it's extremely important because you have PQ is k and you have PM. Here is P and M and it's twice PQ, which means this one here, PM, Right, so PM is twice PQ, which is twice, uh, which is PQ is K, so which means PM is equal to uh, 2K, okay, 2K. Right, so, uh, right, the area of a triangle MPQ um, is that one there, right. So we have been given the area of triangle um, right M, um, P, uh, Q, there it is. Okay, MPQ is exactly that one. They gave it to us. Right, show that MPQ is actually equal to 2 theta. Show that MPQ equals 2 theta, the angle MPQ. So if you look very carefully, there is M, there is P, and there is Q. Right, you need to show that that angle there is actually uh, 
you Peter. Right. So I'm sure that this question is actually uh, very, very straightforward. And so, um, right. So what do we do here? First things first. All right. So in 7.1, just for three marks there. Right. So the couple of hints. And now they've given you something extra. So, for example, if you have been given um, the fact that this angle here is theta, what would that angle be, for example? Okay, so you explore the diagram. So this angle is theta. This one is 90 degrees. So, in other words, this one is 90 degrees minus theta. 90 degrees minus theta. Why is it 90 degrees minus theta? Because now all the angles must add up to 180 degrees in the triangle here. Right, next. What else do we need? Right, what else do we need? Um, right, so we are actually very much well placed to solve this problem. And we just have to show this one for a beautiful three marks. First things first. So, Mr. Examiner, we can solve this question with confidence. And there are too many ways to do this particular question here. Right, so the examiner is saying we need to show that MPQ. MPQ is twice theta. Okay, easy. Right, so the area. The area of triangle. The area of the triangle. MPQ. Right, the area of the triangle MPQ is actually the same as what? Right, it's actually one half. The area of the triangle MPQ is one half into Q, to, uh, into K to K. It's one half into K twice K into the trigonometric sign of the angle included. What is the angle included by the sides? It's this angle here, and this angle is actually um, given there, okay, you need to, it's actually the angle MP uh, uh, Q. So we erase this one here. Yeah. Yes, please. So I'm, I'm confused. How is the area of MPQ equal to half K if they gave it to us as 2K squared sine yes. theta cos theta? Yes, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good point you're raising. So in other words, there are two ways to find it. Right, so there are two ways to find the area. Okay, yeah, are you right? They've given it to us, but there are two ways to find it. So, okay, first I'm using the first method because they've already given it to us. But now we need to find the actual area because if we can find the actual area, then we shall be able to get the result they want. Okay, so there are, two, there are many ways to do the question. Right, so obviously they've given it to us. Right, but there is... um. An easier way to do the question. Right. So at this point, um, what I was saying then is, of course, you're right. So you have half K to K, the sign of the angle included. And this angle is MPQ, which is what they want. Right. MPQ. Right. So you have MPQ. Like this. But I'm, I'm glad that you said they've already given it to us. What did they give us as? That one. So it means therefore here in the place of the area of triangle MPQ, we put 2K squared. We put exactly what they gave to us. So sine theta, cosine theta is equal to. Right, so now you continue to the other side of the equation. Right, so continue to the other side of the equation. What do you get? Right, so what you get on the other side of the equation is exactly that. Okay, so you can write in a couple of ways, but you can write it as um, only because the, the two cancel. So you have k squared, the sign of MPQ, like that. Okay, there are too many ways um, to do this question, but yeah, this is sort of um, the method that will be uh, naturally the one to. Um, to use. Okay, right. So k squared is a common factor here. Right. So if you factor it out, uh, you have to the sine of theta, cosine theta, which is k squared. 
the trigonometric sign, the trigonometric sign of a PQ. Right. So, but so what do we know? But Mr. Examiner, we know that the trigonometric sign of two theta is the same as what? Is the same as two sine theta cosine theta. So we put it here. Right. Hence, this is k squared. Right. Wherever there is two sine theta cosine theta, uh, cosine theta, what do we have? Sine two theta. So this is sine two theta, which is exactly the same as k squared. The trigonometric sine of MPQ. Right. We divide by k squared both sides, and we get that the sine of this is equal to that. Okay, you can show some step, one step. Yeah. But, um, right. So you can just show a step here. Okay, so um, we divide here, so it's k squared. You have the sine of twice theta, which is k squared, the sine of mpq. You divide by k squared, you divide by k squared. And then we're able to achieve that the sine of two theta is equal to the trigonometric sine of mpq. Okay, so what is the answer to this now? Okay, so we have the answer already. So in the end, what do we achieve? All right, so it means we can um, solve this one here because we want to solve for MPQ. So we can write the sine of MPQ, of angle MPQ is equal to the sine of two theta. We proceed to the side. Right, in this case, uh, we have the sine of MPQ is equal to the sine of uh, that one. Okay, let me not repeat that one. Let me just uh, write it clearly here. Okay, so we have exactly what uh, we obtain here. So what is this now? Right, what is this now? Right, so we can write this one here. Right, we have this one over over there. Okay, so we have this, and then we have that. Okay, good. Right, so given this now, we can take the arc sign on the left and arc sign on the right. Let's just do that. So we take the arc sign on the left, and then we have the sign of MPQ angle which is the arc sine of the sine of twice theta. Okay, so the arc sine removes, and we have MPQ is equal to twice theta. Okay, but I must agree that there are many ways to do the question, but this is most certainly one way to do the question. And there are lots and lots of other ways to do it. But the area is, it means you must just, because the area has already been given. So if the area has already been given, you can also find it by observation. You know, because you can just manipulate the it. But I think this is much more of a practical way to get the two theta. Okay, but once again, there are too many ways to do this question. So you can use many, many methods there. Okay, we proceed. The next question. Right, the next question is also very interesting for just four marks by the province of Houtan. Right, the information we read above the area was given. Um, sir? Yes, please. So for the previous question, I'm confused how we got to the two theatre. Uh, right. Like okay, okay. Um, Here we have arc sine of the sine, right? What is this if you say arc sine of, because I'm trying to understand your question, arc sine is like saying two to the negative one times two x. What is the answer? 
Right. If that is your question, I'm trying to understand if that is your question. Yes, so that's my question, yes. Okay, right. Because if you have a 2 to the minus 1 times uh, uh, 2 x, right, what you do is it means this is the inverse. So the inverse of 2 eliminates 2, giving us 1 times x. And the answer is x. So in other words, uh, when you have uh, um, arc sign of the sign of 2x, the arc sign removes the sign because it's the inverse, like uh, the inverse, because uh, you remember that also if you write the inverse of um, of 2, right, now you therefore have the inverse can also be written as 1 over 2. It's the inverse. Right, so these two cancels this one, giving us x. So either way, the inverse removes, the inverse sign removes the sign. Giving us the identity function, okay? But th those kinds of details uh, are mostly preserved for university students because uh, the sign is obviously a function and the number two is a number, um, in which case, therefore, obviously, numbers and functions um, are different in the way they behave and in the in their definitions, right? Um, but as a, as you were saying, that the inverse of two times two gives us one. So the inverse of sine and um, the inverse of of, of the sine, um, right? Taken over um, as a function of the sine will actually uh, eliminate the sine, will remove the sine giving us sine two theta. So as a consequence, therefore, the students in the province of Hauteng were asked to show this question, to just show that MPQ is um, a two theta. And the students would realize that the area was given, it was the hint. Okay, it was the hint because how else can the student, the, the quiz, this question be done? I mean, is there any other way to do the question? You can sit down and think, but obviously if you look at the angle, the examiner wants MPQ, MPQ, you realize there are no other angles that are given here in this triangle here. So the angle theta is just in the other triangle. So you'd be like, but how do uh, does the examiner expect the student to do this? They just have to use the area formula and that's uh, the only way out of this question uh, there. Okay, can they use other methods? Yes, they, obviously there are many other methods. Um, can we use the cosine rule? Yes, we can use the cosine rule. Can we use the sine rule? Yes, we can use the sign rule. But obviously this one was the easiest one to use for the three marks. I, I tried to show a bit more steps, but I should have cut out on, I mean, the whole thing could have taken like literally three steps for the three marks, you know? Um, would have just shown that. From the fact that the sign, from the fact that the sign of MPQ is the sign of two theta, it means that MPQ equals two theta. Because the sign of something equals the sign of something else, it means the angles are the same. Well, it means the angles are the same in the event that the, the sine function is actually a one-to-one -one function. Looking at the angle to Q, uh, two theta is basically mostly an acute angle. Okay, so, but that will be very advanced. The questions, the examiners will ask questions that will observe them uh, um, or uh, sort of behave within the mathematical rules because, uh, yes, the sign can be equal to this, but if the angle is not acute, then the inverse does not exist of the sine function. So, in mathematics, we learn, in particular at university, where we study inverse functions, that the inverse function exists for acute angles theta but not for obtuse angles. Okay, so um, that is something very, very important. So uh, I can always give some details on that. Okay, I believe that is pretty much clear, but yeah, we can have more discussion on this. Next question. Right, in same question, um, they continued from the province of Gauteng. They asked the students to say, hence, what does hence mean? Right, hence means using some information from above. So that MQ is this. The examiner now is interested in MQ. Okay, he's interested in MQ. So if the examiner is interested in MQ, how do we even find MQ? The giveaway is there's a square root. Because there's a square root, it therefore means that we need to use 
the cosine rule, okay? Moreover, we remember that this side here is actually 2k and this one is k, and we just need to find um, mq there, but we already know a couple of things that this angle here is up uh, to theta, and so we are very prepared to do this question with ease. So, Mr. Examiner, in view of the um, law of cosines, so we shall use the law of cosines, right of theta. Right, so what do the law of cosines uh, tell us? Right, so the law of cosines uh, are able to give us the result we desire. Okay, so we continue uh, over here. Right, we continue over there. We continue over there. The law of cosines. Or the cosine law, or the cosine rule. Right, so first we tell the examiner that Mr. Examiner, because you want MQ, and actually we can see it opposite the angle to theta, and this one here is 2K, and this one is K, um, the rule that is fit, the triangle that is fitting is triangle MQP, so in triangle MQP. Right, which means MQ squared, MQ squared is the same as um, what, right? MQ squared is the same as, you can take this side here, is the same as uh, twice K uh, squared, okay? The same as twice K uh, squared. And then we have this one, which is actually the K uh, squared over here. And uh, now we subtract two into the twice K times uh, K, uh, times the cosine of the included angle, and it is actually up to theta over there. Okay, so we have that first step there. We're gonna actually um, not cover a lot of steps there. So this one, we're gonna do it in the least amount um, number of steps, okay? Right, so we have mq squared, mq squared, uh, which equals uh, 4k squared, plus, because you square the 2, you get 4, right? You have the k squared, 2 by 2 is uh, 4k squared, and then you have uh, clearly the cosine of 2 theta. Okay, good. Right, from which now we are in a position um We are in a position to add the numbers uh, to sort of add a uh, group like terms together, right? We agree that if you add actually uh, four k squared and the k squared, they both give us five k squared minus four k squared, right? The double angle formula for the cosine two theta is the same as, so we want to get the sine um, from the cosine. So we're gonna use one minus two, um, one minus two sine squared theta. Uh, right, from which uh, we have uh, mq squared is equal to five k squared uh, minus four k squared. Uh, you multiply these two, negative by negative is plus, four times two is eight k squared, uh, the sine of uh, squared of theta. Right, from which we have mq squared equals, what is five minus four of the k squared? Of course, we get a single k squared. Um, so now we continue. Right, we continue. So this one here is a subtract from five, we subtract four, we get a one. Right, and then we get this one here. Find uh, the squared that. So, which means uh, you have uh, mq squared, which is uh, k squared into one plus eight of the sine squared of theta. Mm -hmm. Right, so this one is straightforward. Uh, we are very close to the results and we can just uh, take the square root of both sides. So we have mq squared, uh, square root is equal to the k squared into one plus eight, right, the sine squared of theta we apply uh, the square root of both sides. All right, so this uh, can be written now on the uh, left-hand side, and we therefore have uh, mq. If you take the square root, the square goes away, 
the square root of k squared becomes k because k is positive, right? So we have one plus eight, the trigonometric sine squared of theta, and this is exactly what they asked the students to prove, right, in the province of Houten, and the students had to prove this for the four marks. And so we have managed to prove this, and using the law of cosines, and uh, um, um, we proceed uh, to the next question because we have solved this one. All right, what is the next question? Okay, they went on to ask the students for a feather three marks from the same province um, to, uh, to do something there, right? They said, if you have that K is this one and theta is this, determine the length of MP correct to the nearest meter. So they've told us that theta is actually 42 degrees there. And we have been given that the angle K or rather the length of the side K is actually this. So we have been given that K is 139,5 meters. And so what do we do now to determine actually the length of MT? And here is MT um, over there within the required uh, result. So um, obviously we can do that one with ease, right? And so, I'm sure that that is very, very straightforward. So to find the length of MT, we use the trigonometric ratios because we can see clearly that uh, the triangle here is right angled. So um, we continue without fear, right? So we then say um, in 7.3, right? So we have the um, in triangle, right? So we're gonna work in triangle MTQ. Right, so we have uh, the, um, we want MT, but also we need to relate that to what we know. We already know MQ there, so we're dealing with the opposite, but the hypotenuse is of interest to us. So we have uh, Sokatoa, in which case uh, we have the opposite over the hypotenuse. Right, opposite over the hypotenuse. So we are, Opposite the hypotenuse is the sine function, so we're gonna use the sine, right? So we have the sine of 42 degrees, which is the same here, so, so right? So we have this uh, triangle there, which is the opposite, uh, which is MT over the hypotenuse, uh, which is exactly MQ over there. All right, so we get the result. So what is this now? Right, so Mr. Examiner, we actually are able to get the length of MT, Right, because MT is actually equal to that one. But, Mr. Examiner, there are a couple of things uh, we need to, to know to find MT because we can cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, MT becomes MQ, the trigonometric sign of 42 degrees. Okay, right, MQ we already know from the previous question, so we just need to copy that one. Right, we proved MQ there. So MQ is actually K, times the square root of one plus eight, the trigonometric sine or square of theta. So, which means that um, here we have uh, um, MT only, right? We have MT only, right? So if we have exactly MT only, okay, we continue, we have MT only, right? So MT is actually K times uh, the square root of one plus eight, the trigonometric sine squared of theta times the trigonometric sine of 42 degrees. And uh, we are in business now, which means uh, we can proceed to solve the problem because we already know our K. This is actually one, say, 9,5 meters. And uh, we have this one, which is the square root of one plus eight, uh, right? And we have this one, which is the sine of the angle theta, which is 42 degrees. Um, times uh, the trigonometric sine of uh, 42 degrees. And T equals exactly the result we are getting here. So now uh, the students, uh, they said uh, correct to the nearest uh, meter. And so let's just uh, quickly um, do this one. So um, if we do this one here, um, it is 139 point 
um, five uh, there meters, right? You multiply by the square root of one plus uh, eight, right? And then you have uh, the trigonometric sine of 42 uh, degrees. And uh, then you square this one here, right? And then it is everything multiplied by the trigonometric sine of 42 degrees. And so we are able to get the result, which is 139.5 into this, the sine of 42, which is 199.805 for one meters. To the nearest meter, um, um, there, which is the, what the examiner wants, it means uh, MP is approximately um, 200 meters, 200 meters, and we are done. And this is the result. So we have been able to determine the length of MP to the nearest, nearest meter. Okay, now we are done uh, with the questions from the province of Hauden. Let's see other provinces as well. I decided to bring a question from the province of the Northern Cape. Right, Northern Cape province, they brought an interesting question. Let's have a chance to see what the people of the Northern Cape brought for their students. I decided to look at this question very carefully from the Northern Cape, um, written in 2023 uh, trial uh, of, of pre pre preliminary exams of the prelims. I decided to look first at 8.1. Right, in the diagram or the diagram shows a vertical pole PS, right, PS, the vertical pole held in position by two anchor cables, PQ and PR. This PQ and PR, their anchor cables respectively, you have S, Q and R lie in the same horizontal plane. You have um, S, Q and R lie in the same horizontal plane. Oh, like the people from the province of Gauteng, they gave the area. And they said the area of triangle QRS is A, M, uh, squared. Okay, so this here, the area might be given in the coming exam. I have a strong feeling two provinces, uh, they have done that. And I've not, uh, these questions, I just chose them randomly. I did not even do them before. I just brought them for us to discuss them. But I can testify that I have a strong feeling the area is very important in this year's November exam in the next couple of days. Right, the angle of elevation uh, from R to P, right, from R to P, the angle is actually X degrees. Uh, QSR is actually the Y. You have QSR is Y degrees, and you have that QS um, is equal to uh, K uh, meters, uh, right? So we have that QS is K meters. Uh, they gave to the students of the Northern Cape province over there, right? So express right now is R in terms of X and PS. Okay, for so just two marks, they've given the students um, something very easy to start with. Let's enjoy it together with the people of the Northern Cape. Right, so we want to express SR, where is SR? Here is S and here is R, um, right, um, in terms of X, right? So in terms of the angle X, um, but also um, in terms of the PS, okay? So um, we can do that with ease. So it means therefore, we need SR, um, which is the adjacent side, adjacent theta, but we also need PS, which is the opposite. So in other words, uh, we recall that uh, we are dealing with trigonometry. So, uh, so Katoa must come to our minds. And now at this point, we want to find, uh, to connect SR, the adjacent side, um, right, related to the opposite. Right, so if you have the adjacent and the opposite, it is the, the tangent that re relates um, the two sides, and then we have the angle up x there. So we have the following, right, so we have the tangent. So first we tell the examiner, Mr. Examiner, we have realized that you actually want us to work in triangle PSR, so in triangle uh, PSR. Right, so we have at this point uh, what? Right, so we have the tangent of the angle X. The tangent of X, right? The tangent of X is the opposite, which is actually PS over the adjacent, which is exactly SR there. And so we are interested in finding SR, so which means therefore we have SR, uh, which is actually PS divided by the tangent of, of, of the angle X. And now this here is the one we want, so SR is equal to this. 
story it means we have found SR in terms of X, but also in terms of the side pairs. And that is very much sufficient for the two marks uh, there from the people of the Northern Cape province. Let's look at the next question. Right, they then said, okay, students, prove this result right now that you have. Uh, so now we're interested in actually uh, looking at the answer to 8.2. Right, 8.2 looks at PS, uh, right. And we already have PS somehow over there. So, and this uh, relates to the tangent of X. And so now we just need to get to something else. And now it means now, how do we get PS? So um, uh, recall that. So we don't need to do this one because we already know from the previous question. We recall that um, uh, PS is equal to, oh, SR is equal to PS over 10X. SR, right, SR is equal to PS over the tangent of the angle X. Okay, so that is what uh, we need to recall from the previous question. After we have recalled that, we are actually in a position to um, get the result. So we have this, but now they said, okay, now we, know, we must uh, make PS a subject out of this, right? Which means that uh, we have PS is equal to actually um, SR, the tangent of the angle X. What is SR, right? So SR now is this one here and can be found with ease, but also we can see that they have given us something about the triangle QSR the triangle QRS, the triangle QRS it actually it has this area um, over there, right? So if this is the case, we can get something out of this, but we can be able to get um, the side SR because the side uh, uh, their uh, QS is already given. So they love the area, these examiners. So we shall say, um, but the area, the area of triangle QSR, we can say QRS, the area of triangle QRS, like the examiner, the area of triangle QRS. QRS, this area has already been given like this. But we can find it as well. Okay, we can start with the given one. So it is AM squared. Leave the meters, leave the meters out of this. Leave the units and deal with the numbers. Okay, but we already know that the area of triangle QRS is also one half, right? Is one half of the size, this K, one half K is R, times the sign of the angle included, which is Y is equal to A, like this. Okay. So what do we get out of this? So what we get out of these is what? So we can simplify these. We can simplify these here because the area has been, give, has been given, but we also found the area as well. So now we need to just find SR out of this. So it's very clear we can cross multiply and be able to get that SR is if you cross multiply, this one becomes exactly twice A. And then you divide by um, actually the side K, the length of uh, the length K. Right, so we have two equations and Mr. Examiner, these are like simultaneous equations that are arising from this beautiful question from the uh, Northern Cape province. And now we tell them and say we substitute. Oh, so sir? Yes. Sir, you lost me after we said the area. Of triangle QRS is A, right? We agree that yeah. the area of triangle QRS is A square meters, which is, I wrote only A because the square meters are just gonna be a disturbance for us, okay? So we just need to deal with the, um, with the area. So I've put the area, but obviously now we also like in Gauteng uh, need to find the area because we're dealing with QRS. So we're dealing with Q uh, there, RS. And so to find the area of this triangle, what do we do? We must find the area. So to find the area, we say half, we say one half times 
the length of the the length of the inclusions of the adjacent sides so that include the angle. So we'll say half k and also this one is r. So to find the but you see they give us the area, but we need to find the area as well. Why? Because the area they've given to us cannot help us now because it appears here. It means that we must get the area as well, because if we're able to get the area as well, then we can uh, be able to get SR from the area. Okay, what is the area of triangle QRS? The area of triangle QRS is half K, these times the sign of the included angle. So we say the area is half K times SR times the sign of the included angle, which is the angle Y. Right, so that's what we have over there. Right, so we cross multiply at the end of these. Right, so this is one half. If we give you in mathematics, one half x equals y. You can cross multiply like this. And then you get x equals two y. So these two, these two goes there. So in the same way, because it's one half, these two will multiply the two a by cross multiplication, right? After that, uh, we divide by what remains. Okay, let me just uh, do it step by step. Let me do it uh, step by step for you to understand. Uh, right, for you to understand. So now we have these here. We have these here. Okay. Okay, so we continue. Okay, so we so we we cross multiply for now marang. We cross multiply for now marang. So how do we cross multiply? So we cross multiply because we have a fraction here. So this fraction we can write it in many ways. You know, let me write it in this uh, very standard way. So now this fraction marang, if we want, we can take because we have the fraction um, one half. So um, we're gonna multiply uh, both sides by the, the, there are many ways. So you can take the number two, multiply by the number two on the left and multiply by the number two on the right. Right, these two cancels this one, giving us K. SR, the trigonometric sine of Y is equal to twice A. Okay, we get this. Now we want to find SR out of this because SR must, uh, up here, why do we need SR from the area? Because uh, we can see that the examiner is saying we must prove PS equals this. But now PS has SR, so we must make SR the subject of this equation. How do we make SR the subject of this equation? Right, so we must divide. Right, so how do we divide? So we take the KSR, the trigonometric sine of Y, which equals 2A, we divide by what, right? We divide by K, the sine of Y, but whatever you have done on the left must be done on the right. So we divide by the K sine Y. It means therefore we have SR is equal to 2A divided by uh, the sine of Y, right? So this is exactly the result we want. Okay, right. So now we have this one is actually um, two, uh, equation two for us, and we got equation one there. And now we are in a good position to conclude this question from the province of the Northern Cape, and we have the result. Right, so we have the final result. What is the final result? So to get the final result, we're gonna move from here to the other side of the board, and we're gonna say, right, let me just erase this one here to be a little bit tidy. And to do the following, so I can draw this one here. So we proceed uh, to the other side of the screen and uh, we get here now. And we're gonna say, now you need to put, what do you put, right? So we need to just uh, take this SR and put it into equation one, right? So uh, the word put is very short, formed by three letters, um, shorter than the word substitute. So put equation. Right, put equation two into equation, into equation one. Right, if we put now equation two into equation one, what do we achieve? Right, 
we're able to achieve that in the place of SR, we're going to put 2A over sine Y in the place of SR. So which means that we're going to have PS. So what is the SR? It's actually 2A divided by the trigonometric sine of Y. Right. And then you have the tangent of X, the tangent of X, which comes with the equation 1. So we have, therefore, that the PS is the same as what? Okay. Right, it's 2 a 10 x, which is actually what they gave to the students or to the learners. It's 2 a the tangent of x, which is actually moreover divided by. Okay, remember you divide by. We have an a, a k here, right? We have a k here. Remember we have a k sine y, so obviously we have a k over there, right? So this one is actually um, a k sine y. So let's look at how far we are. Um, it looks like we got 2a, the tangent of x, divided by k sine y. For four marks there, we're able to achieve the result. And this is what the students from the Northern Cape had to solve this year's trial exams. Next question. Right, so they then said to the students, okay, now that you have found everything, students, um, find the value of y if you have been given all these things. Right, to do 8.3, you would say, you have to say recall. So you need to remember the past, right? And in remembering the past, we remember what we got, what was uh, the PS here? It was PS equals to a 10 X, right? So we have that PS equals to a the tangent of X, which is uh, divided by, which is divided by K sine Y which is divided by k, the trigonometric sine of y. Right, so uh, you can have this, you have this now. So we do we will perform substitution um, from which we know PS now, we substitute. So PS is actually 76,8 meters, um, right, given um, equals twice a is 480,9 square meters. So we put 480,9 square meters. Right, we have the tangent of the angle X, which is 46,5 degrees. So we have 46,5 degrees, which is divided by the K. What is K? K is actually, there it is, 87,36. Right, so we have 87,36 meters. And this is multiplied by the trigonometric sine of y, and we have this. Now, what is this here? We, what is the examiner interested in from the Northern Cape? They are saying, please, learners, find the value of y. So we can see that y is the unknown, and we need to find the value of y. So we have uh, a fraction on the right-hand side of the equation, and we need to clearly perform cross-multiplication. So which means that this is going to multiply that, which means we have uh, 76,8, which multiplies uh, 87,36 times uh, the trigonometric uh, sine of y, which is uh, 2 into 480,9 times uh, the tangent of uh, 46,5 degrees over there. Right. Okay, we have this now. So to get the answer, we must move these two guys to the other side by division. So we proceed and say we shall have the trigonometric sign of the following. So we have 2 into 480,9 times the tangent of 46,5 degrees. It is actually divided by these two guys here and they are 76,8, and it is furthermore multiplied by um, 87,36, okay? We get this. We want to get the numerical value of the angle Y. So now the, we move the sign to the other side, and if you move the sign, the trigonometric sign to the other side, we perform the inverse function application, and it means, therefore, we have the arc sine, we call this the arc sine, which is the inverse um, sine function, and it becomes therefore 2 into 480,9 times the tangent of 
right comma five degrees. You have your parentheses here and you divide these by uh, 76 comma eight. And this 76 comma eight is multiplied by the 87 comma three six. And you close your parentheses here. And now we have the result. So it just remains now to move across the screen and go to the left hand side. And we actually are able to get the final result to this. And how do we get the final results to this? To get the final result, we proceed as follows. Right, so we perform the um, inverse sine um, computation. And how do we perform the inverse sine computation? Um, so we are gonna now just simplify these and get the desired result um, that we want. Right, so the arc sign right now of the following, uh, let's just get that one is uh, the, it had to be found. Right, so we have uh, two within the parentheses um, into 480.9, okay. Um, right, two into 40, uh, 480 uh, there, point nine, right, and that is multiplied by the trigonometric tangent of 46.5. And now let's continue to find the trigonometric tangent of 46.5. Okay, and we get that it is divided by the following, divided by um, 76.8 there, multiplied by um, 87 in the denominator, uh, 0.36, and what is then the result of this? What is then the result of this? Right, so these can be obtained with ease, and now what is the answer to this? Right, the answer to this can be obtained, and I need to just have that one found. Just a second, let's just get the answer. Right, we're gonna get the answer just now. Right. So I got eight comma six eight eight five nine. What did you get again, please? Eight comma six six eight eight five nine. Okay, that's fine because I wanted to bring my calculator. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I'd love to trust you. I'd love to trust you. I don't know if it's right because Y looks bigger than X. Yeah, that's the thing. So um, I need to just let me just bring my calculator because uh, I need to just to make sure we get the correct answer. So, because now then if uh, um, obviously we have that, let's uh, use this calculator yeah. here. Right, so if we use this calculator, for example, uh, what do we get out of this? Right, so let's first write this and then I'm gonna bring the calculator on the screen. Right, so let's, uh, to get the correct answer, just uh, one sec. Right, I'm gonna use the calculator on the screen to make sure we get the correct answer, um, just to avoid uh, actually uh, an error. So we have the trigonometric sign. So I'm just transferring all this information to the left-hand side of the screen. Right, so we have uh, 480 um, comma nine uh, multiplied by the tangent of uh, 46 comma uh, five degrees. It is divided by um, 76,8, right? Multiplied by um, 87,36. And we close the parentheses like this, okay? So now I'm just bringing the calculator uh, there so that we are in a position um, to do the computation. Here's the calculator. And uh, we're gonna do the trigonometric arc sign. Right, so now you need to look very carefully and realize that uh, you need to use the shift button and uh, you have exactly this one here. So you can do it in a couple of ways. You can first, uh, for instance, do the number two times um, 40, 480. So you do 480.9, um, you multiply that by the tangent of 46.5, right? So you have the tangent of 46, right? 46.5 like this, right? And you close there. And uh, moreover, you now perf continue to perform division. 
So you divide by, you put your parenthesis like this, so you divide by 76.8, you multiply that by um, 87.36, okay? And then you have this, you close here, and you close again, and let's see the result, right? So what did you get? yourself hey i got the same thing sir you got the same result okay yes. right so um i think that is uh, very impressive so we are able to get uh, the following results that uh, you got um right so you got the same result just one minute let me show that result again here it is right so um right you got the same results i obviously uh, believe your answer and because now we got the same answer here ourselves, I'm just going to write it on the screen just now so that uh, we can have it um, as well. Right. And to, um, you can be able to see the answer even when you are watching to, during your own spare time. Right. We got that Y is actually approximately um, 8,688,6 degrees up there, which is the value of Y. So you can to two decimal places or to one decimal place. Doesn't matter what you do. You can say, yes, please, my dear. Okay, thanks. Um, right, comma, seven degrees. Okay, so that is the answer to one decimal place. Okay, just one second. Um, I'll be back on the screen. Okay. Um... All right, okay, that's fine. Okay, we continue, we continue. We continue by solving more problems here. Seeing what you are getting, seeing what you are getting. All right, so let's continue, please. Let's continue, let's continue. Okay, so we have this. Next question. Okay, this one is from the province of the free state. And I decided to bring this question from the province of the free state. Why? Because the province of the free state um, has a very good history in education. But we need to understand that um, the province of the free state is the legislative uh, province of South Africa. Um, in particular, if you look at their city, which is Bloemfontein. Let's continue and let's see what the students had to deal with uh, from the province of the uh, free state. Okay. In the figure below, Tabo is sir, in the... Yes, please. Sir, the, the lesson is over, but I can do this for homework. Okay, you can do this for homework. Thank you so much. Yes, sure. the lesson is over. We can do this for homework. I realize that the lesson is over by uh, about six minutes already. <laughs> okay, right. So, okay. Um, so, we're going to do it for homework. So, I'm going to just uh, um, show the question on the screen. So, when you watch the video... I'm going to send you the video in, this, in the next couple of minutes. So you're going to watch the video, do it for homework and send me feedback. Okay. Right. Okay, so um, obviously this is the question. Um, there you're going to read about Tabor and everything for seven marks. You're going to read the video, pause and do the question. Um, right. And I have broken it down here. I had made a space available for us to solve it. Um, there. So you have to calculate the length of the AC and AD, correct to decimal places. And uh, now you have also to calculate the the distance between the two cards, um, the cards, the length of CD as well. And that is the end of the discussion. So I must thank you for joining us. Um, all right, we'll talk again. We can have a discussion as usual. You, started, you suggested Saturday, you said 4 p.m., something like that. You let me know if that is going to work for you tomorrow on WhatsApp. It's okay. All right. Um, right. Thanks a lot. I will send the video in the next couple of minutes, but it takes me about on average 30 minutes maximum to send the video because I must upload it first. Okay. Right. Okay, so, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, we'll talk then about tomorrow. You let me know on WhatsApp um, about the weekend. Yeah. But thanks um, and goodbye, Marang. Okay. So bye. Goodbye.